Hey everybody, welcome back to Northern Alliance Challenge Runs in the Binding of Isaac. Got a very special challenge run for you today. It's, can I recreate Northern Lions quote-unquote best run ever? I'm just gonna pop the nail here so I don't forget. Uh, what the backstory of this run, for those of you who, uh, may not be familiar, is I, I titled the video, like, at, at one point last year when I was playing the Binding of Isaac, my best run ever, and my most powerful run ever. This was pre- Wrath of the Lamb. And it was a run where I just basically had all the items that you see here. Let's talk about what we have. We have the Mark. We have Spoon Better, which is Homing Tears. We have Mom's Contact. Freezing Effect. Uh, we have Coat Hanger. The Nail. Odd Mushroom. Apologies for standing around, but I've got a list of like 12 items here. That was Mom's Contact at work. Mom's Lipstick. Uh, the Relic, which was weird for me when I saw this suggested by YouTube user Pineapple3. Yeah, Pineapple3. Uh, because I was pretty sure that the Relic didn't exist pre-Wrath of the Lamb, but who am I to argue uh, with this challenge run suggestion? Uh, we also have Lump of Gold, the Pact, Cube of Meat, Halo of Flies, and the Battery. So obviously this is an extraordinarily powerful run. Uh, the twist here is that we're not allowed to pick up any items whatsoever, and our goal is going to be to see if we are able to beat the chest with what was previously our most powerful run, uh, probably anyway, trying to beat Satan. I think we have a good chance here, at the very least, it's an incredibly interesting run to try to, like, recreate uh, a pre-Wrath of the Lamb amazing run. We definitely have a lot of amazing items here. I mean, uh, our rate of fire is crazy as a result of the Mark Pact and Odd Mushroom, and our damage is good, too, uh, as a result of a couple of those items. Love of Coal scales well into that, obviously. Uh, we're gonna be able to get a lot of health via... Let's check this out. It was worth it. Yeah, tears upgrade. Um, we're gonna be able to get a lot of health as a result of, uh, the nail and the relic, and of course the battery working in conjunction with both of them. By the way, I'm not sure- I'm not sure why the game is getting framey occasionally, but it, as always, uh, you know, with Isaac, it'll figure itself out. I was talking to, uh, Josh, aka, you know, Jay Smith OTI when I was at, uh, PAX East this weekend, and we're like, you know what, like, indie games, oftentimes people think, like, all you need is, like, a shitty netbook to run a lot of indie games, but that's not the case, man. A lot of these games are optimized, shall we say, weirdly. Isaac is a, a good example, because it runs in Flash. Uh, this is a game where, you know, I have an 8-core processor, a, a video card, with 3 gigabytes of RAM, and occasionally the game just decides, you know what, there's five things exploding on the screen, I can't deal with that right now. In any case, we are about to fight our second boss. Obviously, this is the definition of a challenge run. Uh, where it's gonna start out so incredibly easy because we are insanely overpowered compared to the enemies that we're dealing with, but uh, we're not going to accrue any advantages at all over the course of the entire game, so we really just have to uh, kind of make do with what we've got. Again, no deals with the devil, no boss items can be picked up. I would love to have a compass, but sadly that is obviously, you know, classified as an item, as you might expect, so we can't really afford to use it as such. Uh, Demon Judgment is interesting, but we're gonna skip by him because I don't want the temptation of getting an item. I'm kind of just trying to get out of here, to be honest with you, but we're gonna be able to speed run this floor pretty quickly, and it should be a quick run for better or worse, actually. Now, if I was playing 100% due diligence, I would absolutely, like, spend some more time on this floor just to get my nail charging more, uh, but we're kind of tearing through things so quickly that I'm not sure it necessarily matters yet how much health we're getting. Believe you me, we will be doing a lot of backtracking uh, on future floors, especially floors where we get Curse of Darkness, which basically describes, you know, once you get to like the halfway point of the game, uh, the, the odds of getting like a Curse of Darkness floor, a Curse of Blindness, whatever, uh, appear to be substantially greater, at least anecdotally. They're like dark levels in Spelunky, right? They show up at the worst possible time. And again, no items in the chest either, so we'll see how this works. I've got a great series of items for dealing with enemies as they come. Uh, in the early game here, uh, but unfortunately, I don't have really a great series of items for beating, uh, the enemies that we're gonna encounter on the chest, like, for example, Isaac and Blue Baby, who are both really annoying and, uh, you know, are very good against an, an enemy like me, who just shoots constantly, although, you know, the freezing effect is gonna be nice as well. What I'm trying to get at is, uh, right now, I think we have a pretty good chance of making this run work, and it's kinda nice for me to go back down memory lane here and, you know, revisit this run. Uh, but anything could happen in this one for sure, and, and as enemies get harder and harder and harder, uh, the confidence that I have is going to erode a little bit, I assume, in any case. We'll pick up another key, and at five minutes we are about to head down to the depths, which is nice. In fact, I, I should mention the only exception to the uh, no items rule I'm going to make is uh, I'm going to be able to pick up the Polaroid, obviously. But that, again, that much should be obvious. There's a chance that if we come across an arcade, I might be able to kind of scam the Polaroid because we have so many uh, spirit hearts that our red hearts are kind of negligible. So what I could do is just, uh, well, first things first, let's go down to the next floor. But what I could do is just, you know, get down to basically zero red health 
uh, and then try to roll permanent invincibility. But in any case, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. For now, everything is going all hunky-dory. Uh, I don't know if I've taken damage on this run yet. Now, having said that, it's almost a positive now that I will take damage on this room because that is the way that things work for me whenever I say that. I say that often! <laughs> It's not that uncommon for me to get fairly far into the game without taking any damage, but it's extremely uncommon for me to make it much further after I've said that. Uh, so hopefully this... Uh, we do have good range, so I can just kind of hang back here. Uh, and maybe this green dude will be able to destroy that asshole. Probably not, though, let's be honest. Oh, he was! And actually, that opened the door for us as well. I'm not sure if I might have to go back that way. Well, we don't have to do anything, I suppose. There's two of clubs, which we will just take. Gives us a few extra bombs, which we will use to fight Mom's heart. Uh, I'm gonna take damage on this room almost certainly. If I don't, I would be uh, extraordinarily happy. And you know, now that I look back, because I, I sometimes think back. Oh, we do have to backtrack. I sometimes think back on that run that I titled my most powerful run ever, and I was like, you know what? It wasn't actually all that powerful in the whole scheme of things, but having, you know, spent, what, six minutes with it now, and s speeding through the necropolis, having basically not been hit, I was about to say hidden, which is embarrassing. I, I could get five bombs just for using my nail here, but. Uh, I actually don't know if that's worth it. Or if, it, it might be worth it, but I don't know if it's necessary. Like, if it might be more value for me to just use my nail on this room and start building a charge again as quickly as possible. Well, there's a secret room for us. But anyway, now that I'm playing this run, I'm like, you know what? This run is actually real goddamn powerful. Uh, that money doesn't really benefit us all that much because we kind of can't use it. I mean, technically they didn't say, or, you know, Pineapple 3, there's our damage. Uh, didn't say, you know, you can't play Judgment or anything like that, but I don't think that would be fair, because we, as you can see, uh, we are already basically tearing this game a new asshole. I could go to the shop, I guess, and fight Greed if I wanted to, just for shits and giggles, get a little extra charge on the nail, but I don't think it's totally necessary. Speaking of which, it's not totally necessary either to use the nail as kind of like a damage boost, as I've been using it against a couple of these bosses, uh, but that might become more important as we get you know, later and later in the game and fight, start fighting some more difficult boss of bosses. As of right now, we are in, all, as you can probably tell, a beautiful position. Uh, this boss is going to be kind of an asshole, but we do have, in all likelihood, the speed necessary to get behind him fairly easily. Uh, especially if we can freeze him, you know, but he will unfreeze himself, which will cause situations like that, which are going to be a little bit stressful. That's okay, though. We're just going to try to get behind him. Uh, I don't know if this will do damage. It did indeed, but I took some damage as well. You know, it was Mask of Infamy, you basically just build it into the budget. You're like, okay, we're gonna take a little bit of health against, or a little bit of damage against this guy. Even if things go as well as they realistically can. So we just go, keep doing this. I wish the freezing effect was a little bit more reliable. That was actually a fairly easy kill, so I don't feel too bad about that. And we are going down to the next floor. Now, things are really gonna get, start to get tricky uh, once we head down to the depths. That much should be pretty obvious. Uh, not the depth, sorry, the, um, the womb and the, in particular, the cathedral and the chest. Uh, that should be pretty obvious, but just in case you were wondering, and you're like, Northern Lion, why are you doing the world's most powerful run ever? Well, I'm doing it because it was a, a top comment on a video, but I should use that. Uh, but also because it's interesting, and also because I don't believe it is 100% overpowered. I might be wrong about that, uh, but we won't be able to say that with authority until we actually make it a little bit further into the game. Now, this is, without a doubt, gonna ruin some challenge runs for me. Probably my next one, because I'm gonna be like, why am I not killing every enemy in one hit? Uh, that was a uh, good use of a bomb, I would say. As was, uh, well, those weren't uses of bombs, but Spoonbender actually came through in the clutch for me there. If only I had piercing shots, nothing could stop this run from being truly amazing. Two keys to pick up uh, a little bit of money was an absolute waste, but who knows, maybe that red heart will end up coming in handy. I doubt it, but you never know. We have another key in there, which I'm not that interested in. Once we get down to the chest, I'm not going to take those items either, because, uh, again, we're already rolling with exactly everything that we should need in order to be successful. If I don't succeed on this run, uh, it is not the troll engine's fault. We've kind of taken the troll engine out of the equation, and instead, well, the, the item half of the troll engine out of the equation anyway, uh, and kind of just left me with my own skill and kind of a series of maybe some of the best items in the game. Maybe not individually the best items in the game, because I'm not sure if any item on this list besides um, the nail actually made it onto my top 10 items in the game list that I did a month or so ago. But, yeah, that's where the key, I would say. But, together, these obviously are, uh, you know, accruing advantages that would otherwise... Be you know, we're going to pop the chariot here, because I was getting a little scared of these uh, spikes. And we will absolutely look for some more Tinted Rocks as well. As well. 
Uh, not Tinted Rocks necessarily, but uh, some more Spirit Hearts in particular. That is a range upgrade. That is a speed upgrade, which I almost accidentally walked into, but hopefully you would have forgiven me for that. There is another Tinted Rock in here, and now it's time to try to get that Polaroid Invincibility I was talking about earlier. Even though, oh, yeah, this will still work. We're not. We're just going to pick this up just to uh, hurt ourselves, which is usually, in my opinion, within the original kind of conditions of the challenge run. So, moving on, now that we've gotten the temporary benefit out of that, we are going to look to absolutely uh, pick up the Polaroid. After picking up the Polaroid, we will have permanent invincibility whenever we get hit, and that is going to be a big advantage for taking out bosses later in the game. Almost certainly, uh, I will, I should have hit that earlier actually, but almost certainly I will end up, uh, yeah, why not? Let's see what this tarot card is. Uh, I will end up picking up a red heart by accident, and I'll call myself a big dummy, but, uh, you know. That's the way the cookie crumbles in the Binding of Isaac sometimes when you're rolling with these kind of weird strategies. I don't consider uh, that the idea that Mom will be very difficult to have much value uh, here because we are obviously doing crazy damage. And even though we don't have any traditional crowd control items, we're doing so much damage that we are the crowd controller. We might as well be the riot police right now. We can control the largest crowd in Isaac's history. Well, maybe that wouldn't be true. Could The, the real question is, could my computer handle the largest crowd? in Isaac's history, and the answer to that question is fuck no. In any case, Mom, getting very close to death here. And, uh, you know, there's no way she's making it back from this one alive, sorry to say. Happy Mother's Day, Mom! Here is, uh, my Colish tears. Colish? Is coal an adjective you can use that way? Just trying to occupy my idle mind as I make my way down to the womb part one. With the Polaroid, but with no compass, so we are gonna have to do, you know, a little bit of exploration here. But again, this is where the game should start to possibly uh, get a little bit trickier, although the permanent invincibility is going to be a very nice touch as well, as you might expect. So we're just going to kind of, uh, you know, I always fail to abuse Lump of Coal, but I'm going to try to abuse it more often here. We're going to try to stand as far away from these enemies as is humanly possible, because I do have uh, some range advantage that should allow me to take out enemies fairly easily. I did take uh, a couple of pills, I think, or one at least, that gave me a range advantage which is okay. So we're gonna take the Spirit Heart and leave, and at this point, I'm getting increasingly confident about our chances, because we just can't not get. I don't know why I walked into that guy after I hit the, I, don't know, I thought maybe the nail made me invincible, I guess. Um, like, I'm, I'm getting so many Spirit Hearts that the rate at which I lose them, it, it's becoming unfathomable how fast I would have to start losing them, uh, you know, once we get a little bit later in the game, in order to have even a chance to drop below a sustainable level. Uh, so as of right now, I'm feeling very, very confident about my slash our chances. Uh, anything could still happen, and of course the Isaac and Blue Baby fights are what I'm largest, uh, or most concerned about, I should say. Uh, I guess we froze him there, and that's what made that possible. But down to the next floor, Womb Part 1 was very, very easy. I guess I'm not, uh, on a room-to-room -room basis, or like, what would be the most difficult room, I'm most concerned about Isaac, Blue Baby. Uh, but I guess in general, I'm most concerned about running into, or the most dangerous kind of situation I could run into is some very, very difficult rooms stacked one after the other, after the other, after the other, about 30 times, uh, that could whittle our health down. You know, rooms with those asshole bomb flies, uh, that explode. Wow, we already found the boss fight, which is amazing. If we can just kill these guys before they can do much, then what I can also do, as this guy's just frozen, is just walk through these, and we might be able to find a, uh, tinted rock. A hidden tinted rock. A stealthy tinted rock, if you will, although it's looking increasingly unlikely now. Please don't be full health. It's tears up. I will absolutely take that. I don't think that necessarily counts as an item. Wow, that was like the fastest we will ever go through the womb without the compass. Just getting incredibly lucky and having insanely high damage. Maybe this is my best run ever. Mark 2. I think I titled the video that once. My most powerful run ever, Mark 2. I can't remember. Throw some bombs in here. Mom's Heart boss fight might take a little bit longer than the uh, Mom boss fight in all actuality. Uh, but, you know, these enemies are obviously, as you can see, very, very easy to kill. Once we get that nail charged up again uh, by the battery, which may or may not, not happen uh, over the course of this fight, but I think it's likely to. Um, then we'll be doing even more damage. Actually, we, we might not get it, because we're, we're starting to go a little bit faster here. The bombs are just not doing nearly as much damage as I thought. They're doing like less damage than one second full of tears, which is disappointing. But I guess not altogether unexpected. Are we in permanent bomb state yet? I guess we are, so let's just hang back a little bit. Uh, and this fight will be over. Before we know it, we'll be able to go up and fight Isaac, where things are going to get, for once, a little bit tricky. But for now, Pineapple 3, I appreciate the challenge run suggestion. But my skills in holding the left and right buttons... 
as well as moving occasionally with WASD are unparalleled, apparently. Obviously, I'm being a little facetious. This is the kind of room I'm worried about. Yeah, I knew we were going to take damage, but again, at the same time, we're, we're also accruing so many spirit hearts. We'd have to take basically, like, two spirit hearts of damage per room or something uh, to for this to become a, a genuine threat. Okay, so finally, I, I took one uh, spirit heart of damage there, but what I was trying to do is at least make sure I had a path with which to kill this guy. Uh, that was not the best way to deal with that room. I, would, I will um, acquiesce on that front, but... It's done now, we'll be moving on. Freeze, actually, for once, don't really bother me, because, uh, you know, one or two freezes is enough to knock him out of the equation, in all likelihood. Uh, and, you know, we do have this Halo of Flies and the Cube of Meat to protect me from damage as well. If this was really the run that I had uh, in my most powerful run ever video, then it doesn't surprise me that Satan was super fucking easy. Satan's, you know, at this point, easy enough on the best of, or on the worst of days, uh, but with this run, it wouldn't have even been close. Although I'm 90% sure I didn't have the relic, because that doesn't really make sense, considering that item wasn't in the game yet, I think. Um, but, I don't know. Who am I to argue with this guy, right? He probably knows it at least as well as I do. And I mean that's like non-ironically, or non-sarcastically. You, pr you probably do know the runs better than I do. And I don't even see the runs anymore, man. All I see is blondes, brunettes, redheads, etc, etc. Other proprietary Matrix quotes. Why I ran into Daddy Long Legs there is beyond me. Uh, I thought that leg was eventually going to disappear, I guess. We'll pick up some more money, continue our make away, making our way on here, and it's kind of a testament to how fast things have gone on this run, usually, uh, that I feel like this has taken forever on the ch on the cathedral, even though we're only, like, what, eight rooms deep or something, and we're, we've already found a few dead ends, which is actually a positive, believe it or not. We have a uh, another weird kind of case of slowdown. I don't know what's causing that. Oh, don't pick it up. That was almost a terrible accident. So let's come down here. We got Greed and Fistula. Annoying, yes. Difficult, probably not that much. Uh, especially if we can actually... Well, the Fistula is going to last longer than I thought. As are these Greeds. I figured they would be dead uh, very, very soon, actually. It's okay, though. Uh, let's kill these dudes and... I guess we'll just move on after this. I mean, what else are we going to do? But I was just thinking, like, do I have anything to do when I'm... Oh, yeah, just kill dudes. This is consistently wreck shit, basically. That was actually a pretty solid dodge there, if you saw it. And we'll be able to get another nail charge and another spirit heart here. Temperance is a blood bank. Rhythm is a dancer. I'm as serious as Phantom Lancer right now. Uh, I'm not going to risk... Oh, well, I guess I am. I didn't mean to, but um, I guess we'll take that now. That was a total accident. Oh my god, I thought I had enough time with the invincibility to do it again. Anyway, we're going to pop the, the nail here. That was very poor play, but we're kind of at the point where it may or may not matter. So hopefully I, I did get a freeze here. That might be enough to kill him. It is indeed. And we will take our penny and move along. Where we have finally, and by finally I mean actually in a fairly reasonable amount of time, found the boss room. And this is exactly the kind of run I needed. I'm not sure if you watched the last run. If you did, my apologies. This is the kind of run I needed after that last run. Where uh, everything just went badly due to my own idiocy, basically. Uh, this feels a lot better. This feels like what I need. It's a refresher course, if you will. It's gonna take us a while to kill Isaac. Uh, you know, we're, we're doing damage, but it's not insane damage. Permanent invincibility from the Polaroid is gonna be huge here. Uh, and it's- this is a lesson that I should probably have the nail ready when I want to fight Blue Baby, because, uh, it'll- I don't know if it'll double, but it'll definitely noticeably, uh, and tangibly speed up the rate at which we kill this dude. So we do have the nail ready here. We can see how much faster we go now. You know, it's not enormous. Uh, but it is a, a big deal. And actually, this is looking like it's going to be insanely easy. I'm essentially standing still. My Halo of Flies and Cuba Meat are taking all of the shots for me. Uh, and... Oh, I finally took a little bit of damage. Uh, but beyond that, uh, our freezing effect is making it so Isaac, like, barely even gets a chance to attack. We're just going to kind of roll around here. And in mere moments, Isaac should be dead. In fact, it kind of looks like he's disappearing right there now, but he was just firing a bullet. Okay. He is indeed dead. We don't want to pick that up. Nothing can stop us now. With four keys, I just want to open the chests just to see what they would be. How much would they help us? The shears would be, I guess, beneficial at this point. Uh, that would be awesome as well. Not so good, but a passive in holy water and scapular. So, you know, we would have a fairly solid suite of items here on the chest. Not the, the best suite of items I've ever seen. I mean, there's no, like, Polyphemus in there. Uh, but certainly far from the worst series of items I've ever gotten on the chest. So, luck is just on our side today. 
I suppose. But, you know, I, I could probably beat this challenge run. I shouldn't get cocky because it's not over yet. But uh, I, I'm feeling like I could probably beat this challenge run basically 10 times out of 10. Which is probably the uh, mark of an unbalanced run. But that's okay because it's a fun run as well. I definitely should have popped the... Uh, oh, man, we have the Empress too. I definitely should have popped the Nail before we finish that room. But, oh, well. Let's pop it now. And just run around. Obviously, I'm going to be saving the Empress card. For the blue baby fight, just to make sure we'll be okay. Intercepted! Um, uh, yeah, bloat almost got me there. In fact, it might even be worthwhile to use this Empress card on the bloat, but I'm not gonna do it. I think I just accidentally made a Dana Carvey reference, which means I'm no better than J. Smith OTI. I got nothing against Dana Carvey. Um, and that's all I have to say about that, apparently. Uh, this guy's dead. We're gonna move upwards. We gotta deal with Gertie, and you know, these are tough rooms, but I shouldn't really be complaining because this is kind of what you expect when you get to the chest. I don't even really have to dodge because I'm pretty much impossible to hit just by virtue of the fact that I have this halo of flies and cube of meat, I guess. Not to mention Gertie doesn't even get a chance to shoot because it just gets perpetually frozen due to my high rate of fire and mom's contact. Uh, so I guess we'll be moving on here. Obviously, I'll be popping the nail right away, and then I'll be taking damage, which means I will be standing still next to these enemies and speeding up the process by which I kill them. So the Widow... Oh! Almost got killed. It's not the Widow, it's actually the Wretched, I think, died fairly quickly. Again, losing one Spirit Art per room is not enough to put us in a difficult position at all. In fact, I'm basically destroying these enemies before they even get a chance to do damage to me. Uh, so whenever they hit me once, it's almost like they got lucky. Well, that's fine. Oh! Almost picked that up. Uh, that spider was actually incredibly skillful, but let's move along here. I'm really impressed with myself, not to brag, but that I haven't, uh, actually picked up an accidental, uh, health consumable at any point during, you know, this post-Polaroid area of the game. Which is kind of surprising for me, because normally I don't have that kind of foresight, like I can't stop myself from being impulsive. Uh, war should not be an issue here, we don't have crazy speed. Uh, we do have decent speed. I guess Odd Mushroom uh, can be thanked for that, but he might not even get a chance to run at us regardless. There's a good idea. We use the nail uh, just in time to make sure we still got a charge for it. And we picked up two random spirit hearts on this room. Well, actually not random because one of them is a result of the uh, blue famine. Which sounds like it probably killed a lot of people. But in actuality, it's just from a video game. So we're just gonna stand here. These Lokis are taking a surprising amount of damage, I will admit. Kinda just wanna hang out on this room until the nail's ready to go again, but... You know, I, I, at this point, I probably have like 30 spirit hearts, so I'm not sure if there's a huge uh, detriment for me to... Well, we might as well just go stand next to him now. If there's a huge detriment to me taking damage at this point, I could probably take a hit like every two seconds for the rest of the game uh, and still survive. And it's literally impossible for me to take a hit every two seconds because I have the Polaroid giving me invincibility. So, this should be a very easy fight. Obviously, we will pop the Empress. We could probably just go stand right next to him, but let's put on at least the guise of this being professional. Uh, and, you know, doing our damnedest to, to kill him as fast as possible with, while taking as little damage as possible. So I'm just gonna fire at him here. He's gonna enter the second phase any second now if he is not totally frozen. Pretty high level Isaac play here. I'm, if you wanna, you know, re recreate this at home, I am holding the right arrow key. Uh, pretty much ad infinitum, and that should carry us through to victory as we enter the third phase of Blue Baby here, where he will be, you know, half finished with the third phase uh, by the time he even unfreezes. In fact, he has not taken a shot at us in quite a long time. Halo of Flies, Cuba Meat gonna finish the job here, and that is gonna do it, man. Thank you to the Pineapple 3 for suggesting that I do my most powerful run ever, recreated to do the chest. I think that is a good proof that that run uh, was exceptionally powerful. No items over the course of the entire game. Only kind of ingenuity I used was uh, getting permanent invincibility from the Polaroid. But again, thank you to Pineapple3, thank you to everyone who voted for that challenge run, and continue suggesting your own challenge runs in the comments. I will do the ones I deem most entertaining or appropriate. As always, thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.